Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech, and today I'm looking at the change log for 0.10.7. Let's dive into it. Okay, so the first one is the new key binding for toggle expand collapse this block. And normally I would just use control up arrow, control down arrow for it, but they suggested making that like a single key, which, you know, I get because, you know, having a a button, the control semi semicolon here is one key instead of two that you have to memorize, like if the arrow up and down key. So yes, there's an improvement there. I don't care about it too much, but I see the benefit of it. I do care about, about the consistent key binding. So like I would prefer if like alt was moving up and down uh, for your blocks and inside the blocks. So when you go like with alt right here, you go in a block and left, you go out of a block and then go up and then out of a block again. So I love moving around using the Alt key and I really would like that to be like more of a consistent where Alt is move, Control is like changing. So indenting, out denting, moving things up and down in the set and shift for selection. But now it's like always a bit of a guesswork and I don't even know for sure like how to move things up and down because I constantly mix up the key bindings in my head. But you know, this is like a good, nice, consistent toggle. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a step in the right direction, but I think overall the keyboard shortcuts could use an overhaul. Now I couldn't get the next one to work. This is about the share open assets uh, on the Android app. That means that if you like open a PDF, now it would try and open it with the default app, but sometimes you just want to be able to share it and then either send it towards an app like email or you want to pick from the different PDF file things that you have to open it. Same for images that you might want to open in an editor or just a viewer. So the idea is good there, but I haven't gotten it to work. I will mess around with the Android app tomorrow and see if I can get it to work and then record it. And hopefully we can splice it into the edit so you can see it. But it's nice that more of the share function is there. Now it's the one thing that I really miss is more share towards Luxie because I would like to be able to just, when I see something on my phone, say share and then just quickly add it to my journal. But you know, another step in that direction. Now I've been looking into uh, this next set about the accent colors, but it seems that there's like multiple fixes for the accent colors happening and they're all mixed in different items here. But we'll look at the accent colors in a bit. Uh, another thing here is that we have now these nice free dots that show on the menu. Now on a PC system, you might be going like, yeah, but I can always push like right click and show stuff. Sure, but if you're using like a touch interface or if you're on like a mobile device or you have like a single button mouse which still happens on Mac then it's nice that you don't have to hold press to get a menu but you can just click on a button uh, currently it does tricky things on my Android phone I'll show it here and I think that's a bug for the next release then we get to the refactoring drop down context menu with new components. So this is something that you mostly see now when trying to open, for example, a single component. So if I press CC, I get the accent color in like a nice separate box. I really love the fact that we now have like a cancel accent color, which helps with theming where you don't want all these colors to be mixed in. But I also like the fact that if I'm changing color, as you can see, everything changes in the background. So you have type of a preview mode if this is the accent color you would like. And it all feels very, nice and consistent things like if you hover over it it shows the color that you're going to pick clicking things highlights them and shows things fading and fading in and out on the background so it all smoothly scrolls over and it can't be underestimated how that makes an application just feel better so it's a lot of work happening I've, I've looked into it there were a bunch of changes I think there's a lot more happening here than I'm talking about but overall it just really improves the overall workflow of Logseek when using the elements and the settings and i'm really looking forward to more and more plugins supplying this as well it shows the benefit of that ui element buttons that were added in the last release and the last one here is better handling for the mac os scroll bar i don't have mac os but i'm assuming it's a bit similar to the windows one where if you push the middle one you can use this to scroll up and down and then you don't see it in my recording but i do see it on the side there is a scroll bar that happens outside of my screen and I'm assuming it's the same for Mac. I could be wrong however so if you have a Mac and you're testing this and you say like oh this is like a huge improvement drop me a comment below if there's something that's like detailed I'll pin it so other people can read it there. And then the last bit here is about a language fix for Persian. I speak no Persian so I'll skip that one. Then we get to the fixed 
issues. And then the first one is adding the hike media type. Now that's mostly huge for iPhone users because iPhone by default will save photos in the hike format. And even though Apple did some work, like if you're sending it in WhatsApp or if you're emailing it, it will convert it to JPEG for people. It's, you know, still something that is kind of a, a like a finicky, at least I see it with my girlfriend. She has an iPhone. Most of the time it works fine, but then when you're trying to make like a photo album or you're combining her and my pictures together, I have to start converting all the hikes to JPEGs to make them compatible with other software. Assuming that is also for other iPhone users, it might be a hassle. Still, you know, it saves around 50% storage compared to JPEG. Pros and cons there, still wish uh, like Apple would just save both or something like it, but that's outside the scope here. I'm just glad that if you're working with Logseek on iPhone, you no longer have to think about it because it will just support the media type. One question that comes in my head then though, is if I use sync, that means that it will sync the hike format towards your system. And on Mac, that shouldn't be a problem, but if you're working with like an iOS uh, device, say you have like the iPad and you have a Windows system, I would like to know like how well does that work if you're opening those files on your Windows system? Let me know if you have that set up and can test. Then we get to preserve root note block refs when cutting and pasting. And it sounds very complicated. I had to look at a couple of the videos. Uh, what it means is if you have like a reference, say for example, I would reference this root block. So I do a control C and I would place that here. Let me just make an example quickly. This works fine, but then if you would have copy and pasted this whole block, so I do like Control X, I remove it and I would move it down a bit, then the reference would be gone. And as you can see, now it just pops back up and everything works as intended. But in the previous version, then this ID would be gone and this would show like a blank UUID. I have seen a couple of times where my block links were missing and I think this bug might be the root cause of it. So absolutely happy about this because that means that my linking internally stays more consistent and that's a better experience for everyone. Fix main scroll bar jumps. I went through it and what it mostly means is that we already had like a fix for the scroll bar jumps, but it was like constantly checking even after it was done drawing Logseek on your screen, meaning that there was like a high CPU usage in the background. This fixes that by once the window's drawn and you don't make any changes to it, it will idle down and save yourself some bandwidth. This should have major improvements for people with like lower CPNs and that have to be careful about their cycles. And of course, like always power usage, snappiness, these kind of improvements toggle up over time. Then the next bug was if there was a wrong total favorite in config, where they meant that if there was an entry in the config EDN that was removed or didn't work, Logseek would crash and you wouldn't be able to restart or get it to work stable, no matter what you tried, except for deleting the config.edn. Because deleting the config.edn is not something an average user would just do. This is of course a really bad case. I'm glad it's fixed. That means that like if there's like a wrong entry there, you either it ignores it, which is the, I think, ideal because, you know, it doesn't do any hurt to have it in there. And in other cases, just shows a pop up saying like, hey, there's something wrong with your config at the end. Would you like me to reset it to default? And then the last one is the fix search term query highlight performance. What that means is search is tricky because when you're searching, you're always making a trade off between how much time are you going to take before you're getting the results back and how accurate are those results going to be. A couple of things what I was reading into this is that it caused crashes. So if you were searching for some things and it would hit the wrong note, then it would crash Logseek, which is of course always bad. Another one is that you wouldn't find whatever you were searching for, which I think is even worse because then you start doubting yourself. It wouldn't be the first time that I'm searching for something and go like, I know it's there somewhere. And then I have to go like swim back through my journal. And then I found out that it is there. My search term was just a little bit different than what Logseek was searching for. Uh, and this lowers trust over time. I know a lot of stuff is there and I still highly recommend to people if you can find it in Logseek, but you're absolutely confident that it's there, use something like a file search around it. That's a lot slower, but it will go through all your markdown files make use of that text 
back end that you have. Those were the enhancements and fixed issues for this version. And then we get to the thanks where I'll do my bestest attempt to name everyone that helped out Loxseek. Um, that starts with a thanks for Mustafa Ahangarha. As I said, my Persian is non-existent, but I hope I didn't butcher it too much. Then we have Vladimir Pusanov, uh, which did a graph current usage electron state. Then Puneet Changanti, fixed typo in ml doc tobias domhan for fixing the preserve root refs when cutting tofer hunter for adding a new key bind and yo jp for the main scroll bar jumps thank you all i'm super glad this makes the system that i use day to day more stable and it gives me a great time that was it for this time remember you're awesome keep it up and see you in the next one <laughs>